Until the Great Depression, Mexico and Latin American countries in general relied on commodity exports to fuel overall economic growth. There was little support for strong protectionist policies to promote domestic manufacturing. Most of the controversies in the 19th century tended to be of a political nature. Questions such as church and state, centralism versus federalism, and racial questions. There was less debate about economic policies. Governments in the region typically offered some protection for domestic manufacturing, but generally encouraged foreign investment and export growth. The lack of controversy about economic policy, however, doesn't mean that policies were coherent or implemented consistently in the region. In fact, there was typically little thought given to how the growth in commodity exports would lead to overall economic growth, that is, how they would actually transform the rest of the economy. It was assumed by governments in some ill-defined way that commodity exports would enhance productivity growth and structural change throughout the economy. Export growth, however, is not the same thing as export-led growth. If overall GDP growth was to be driven primarily by export growth, then the latter would have to be quite rapid to be able to raise average per capita income in a country. One reason that it was so difficult to turn export growth into export-led growth is that Latin American countries often had dominant market positions in their commodity markets, making it hard to increase export growth by gaining more market share. In such a market, exports tend to grow at best in line with world imports. In 1913, for instance, Mexico produced more than 30% of the world's silver. Latin American countries suffered from a lack of diversification in the number of commodities they exported, making them extremely vulnerable to external shocks. Exports of precious metals, for instance, made up almost 80% of Mexico's total exports in the 1880s. This fell to 45% by World War I, but even this number is quite high. There was also a lack of diversification in terms of export markets. In the mid-19th century, the main export market for almost all Latin American countries was Great Britain. By 1913, the U.S., Great Britain, Germany, and France accounted for more than 90% of exports in 10 Latin American countries and more than 70% of exports in 18 Latin American countries. And some of the countries that had managed to diversify in terms of number of commodities, like Mexico, Peru, and Paraguay, didn't diversify very well in terms of the number of their export markets. For instance, Honduras, Panama, and Paraguay sold more than 80% of their exports to the U.S. by 1913. In the Mexican case, in 1913, 75% of Mexico's exports went to the United States and 54% of its imports from the United States. And like I mentioned earlier, this lack of diversification made Latin American countries really vulnerable to external shocks like the Great Depression. Because Latin American countries relied so heavily on commodity-driven growth, they were extremely hurt by the Great Depression in the 1930s. And the countries damaged worst by the Depression were the ones that relied heavily on mineral exports like Bolivia, Chile, and Mexico. For instance, the purchasing power of exports in Chile fell by 83% at the start of the 1930s. And what I mean by purchasing power of exports is the amount of imports that can be financed by total exports. This table gives the price, volume, and purchasing power of exports in 1932 relative to the base year of 1928 for Mexico and for the Latin American average. If we look at the price of exports, we can see that they fell precipitously. So the price of Latin American exports on average was only 36% of what it was in 1928. Mexico was a little bit better, but it still had fallen by about half. The volume of exports fell even more in Mexico than it did in Latin America as a whole. 58% of what it was in 1928. In terms of purchasing power of exports, we can see that Mexico fared very poorly. So purchasing power of exports in Mexico was only 30% of its 1928 number. Well, re Mexico recovered relatively quickly from the Great Depression, reaching its pre-depression GDP peak again in 1934. These numbers show why so many Latin American countries were eager to try a different model. Some Latin American countries initially embraced ISI, but then later turned back to export-led growth. Besides Mexico, the countries that embarked most seriously on protectionist policies were Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and Uruguay. One of the best sources of information on this topic, and the one that I used to create this video, is from Victor Bulmer-Thomas's book, The Economic History of Latin America Since Independence.